Thank you for the introduction. My name is Ramanand Reddy. I'm a VP uh, at Tinder uh, who runs growth and revenue teams. Today, I'm going to talk about how do we think about building a robust product roadmap to both achieve short and long-term goals. In this section, uh, we're actually going to go through what are these goals? How do we define short and long-term goals? How do they fit on your roadmap? How do we think about building a product roadmap around achieving these short and long-term goals? And how do we know that our roadmap is working? And how do we create a balance where we are able to create a product roadmap that has a good balance between short and long-term goals? So it, let's address the biggest question in the, the biggest elephant in the room. Why have these goals? We are all uh, at every given interval of time um, have goals that we need to achieve for either a business growth or how we think about consumer problems. And some of these goals are meant to be achieved in the next three months. And some of these are achieved in the next five months. And we've all been situations as such. Sometimes we visualize and think about that nobody at the company is really thinking about how to achieve long-term ambitions for the, for the consumer and for the business. And sometimes we're also looking at why are we thinking so long term? What, what can we do in the next three months? What can we do actually in the next six months? And how do we show progress in um, any of our KPIs that we define? So when we think about it and if we, stick, if we take a step back, what does a short term goal really look like? And in most businesses, consumers, SaaS, uh, enterprise, uh, whether you're a pre-IPO, post-IPO, um, these are really relatively problems that we can relate to. Right. Well, some of the short term goals would look like, are we really focused on improving retention? Are we really focused on improving our conversion to our products? Um, is there a way to increase our LTV? When you think about e-commerce, are we thinking about increasing the orders and sometimes the average order value? They may also look like, can you solve problems, consumer problems specifically? When you think about, is there an onboarding step that you want to draw? You want to reduce the drop off? Or are there better ways to expose premium experiences in your product? Are, are the customers struggling with some of the UX and UI decisions in your product, which eventually will, will result um, in an outcome? And in no matter how we think through these, these are short-term problems that are able to show sequential impact to our business, to our consumers, and how we can get measured uh, relatively. When you think about long-term, there is a definite change in how we should think about what are the road, how does the roadmap think, uh, how come, come across for long-term? Um, in the long-term aspect, we are thinking very broadly. We are thinking about how do you expand our category, whether you know whether you are in social, whether you are in consumer, whether you're in enterprise. How do we think about creating more loyalty with our customers? How do we create access to experiences that are very exclusive to certain set of our customers? All in all, these are created because you want to generate step function changes to your user growth or revenue or to even your consumer or to your NPS. When we think about short and long-term roadmap, there is certain scale to understand how do they fit in your uh, entire product roadmap. Especially when you look at shorter, uh, short-term roadmap, uh, these are something that you have to achieve in three months. You should have high confidence on uh, achieving these um, goals. You should think about a very well-defined spec. The outcomes are expected, very scientifically driven on what these short-term goals should be. And you have a very clear KPI of glossary of, uh, of metrics that you can solve for. And the most important thing is to be able to A-B test and iterate on all of these features. On the same side, when you think about long-term roadmap, this is obviously something that's going to span over six to 12 months. You are going to take a bet on something that is defined strategy, not a defined spec. You're expected to analyze the outcomes. You definitely do not know how the outcomes would look like. You have an intuition and a market opportunity, which is not as scientific driven as a short-term roadmap is. And you're not looking for one specific KPI to be, in, to be able to impact. You're looking at a selection of KPIs. And the way you eventually test these are based on geos and based on markets. And unlike a short-term A-B testing framework, these are much more granular, much more broader in terms of how you think about the test. Now let's address what should, how should you think about the short-term goals and what should the product roadmap look like? There's a very definite process in, in achieving short-term goals. And uh, your product roadmap should consist of, one, the identification of the short-term goals. So you should, you should have clear KPIs and hypotheses, and which are meant to be 
trying to understand what the signal is for each of your um, short term livers sometimes you could it could be as broad as retention but it could also be what is the underlying thing that would improve retention is it an experience within the product is it reducing the friction in onboarding is it better registration process once you identify these short term levers that you're able to fit within the product roadmap you're going to test and basically iterate rinse and repeat and eventually come back to a point where you're able to measure and analyze the step of measure and analyze is very important because one it helps you if your problem has been stated for correctly and and you've identified the right levers to grow and second you're also building confidence on how do you think about the right set of kpis and how do you think about the performance improvement that you could show about these kpis and in the short term it's very very important that you have a, a very clear confidence on what kind of goals you can pick up and being able to impact on it if you're thinking about building a robust roadmap around short term goals it is not just about uh, a set of product features if you look at the confidence level and when you start iterating on on really the the short term aspect of uh, uh, of your goals we start out at the first step of the process which is identification we think about problems we think about opportunities we think about different themes and features at this point of time we do have very low confidence so your product roadmap might might really look like i'm really trying to find out how to you know improve my retention how to improve my registrations by solving certain problems a b and c as you move towards achieving more of the short term goals and trying to best understand how they fit into your product roadmap you actually increase the frequency of your testing you are you actually increase the frequency of releases and then you're recalibrating on whether these are the right sort of goals that you've identified and whether you're able to put the right product roadmap into it as and as you move towards from frequency of testing and if you're getting more confident on your own product strategy and roadmap you're actually going to build tools tools that are meant for platforms uh, to scale on platforms tools that are meant to give access to people and for them to be able to run and iterate on it faster and also tools that can basically take the first two steps and put them at scale and you don't want to be doing the same kind of iterations for 170 countries in the world you want to be able to build out one experience that solves for a uh, for a problem and being able to replicate that at scale and being able to localize at that point and eventually you get to a very high confident position when you think you can identify the problems you can be able to increase your cadence and frequency and iterate on them and then eventually you're able to build tools at this point it's repeatable it's coachable to people and then you have high confidence on achieving such short term goals in your roadmap when we think about building the long term aspect of um, our product strategy what is very important is to understand for a long term goal you really really do not have uh, um, an underlying clear kpi right the first thing is to how does this roadmap help validate the space uh, the space that you're in if you're in consumer if you're in social if you're an enterprise you really want to understand how do how do we build what is the next next evolution for, for the space in order to be able to answer that is what your product roadmap should Uh, reflect and that should be your first sort of test or that should be your first sort of experience or a theme or a feature that you're going to build once you understand that there is some validation in the space either through signals that you have tested internally in the product you are now thinking about building the mvp that finds the answers and during the mvp your product roadmap really reflects on okay what is the requirements that i have what do i know about this customer what is that i want to learn about this customer when i put this uh, experience out and they have to be as broad as does the customer feel satisfied with the product does the customer understand the experience does the customer have willingness to pay versus short term goals like hey do we did we see any particular drop off should we optimize for drop off at this point in this experience once you are shipped an mvp then you have to be able to understand to how to acknowledge these signals at scale one of the key things about understanding the long term aspect of the product is you should be able to receive the similar signals that you receive in the short term aspect which is like retention improvement conversion but these signals at scale help you understand whether there will be an uh, complementary experience that can live within the product without taking away from your core product without taking away from your core services of the product so it's very very important to understand how these signals work at scale and and then can your ro- roadmap reflect questions as such or experiences or features as such uh, for the scale as you know more about your signals how are you building and modifying your milestones so that you can react to the market better 
they are now really thinking about i've understood what what is the long term aspect of, of a product and experience that i can build that achieves the milestones that i've set up for how do i now take it to market to fundamentally question the more uh, real aspects of this which is like how does it add consumer value how does it add business value and if you take a, cri a critical view of the product roadmap um, and and you think about short and long term this is not an ideal view but a, over a period of time i've seen this change mul multiple ways uh, from each quarter but you do want to be able to assess whether your roadmap has a clear breakdown of what you're doing in the short term what you're doing in the long term and what you're doing obviously which falls in between or which falls in improving the tech or which falls in improving the customer experience which i call the mess for an example here if you look at it i start out on the quarter a in in one particular year where a lot of my roadmap is actually consists of features that are very focused towards the short term and as i progress through the year i'm able to invest more into my long term aspect of the roadmap this is about the way i explain you get better at your short term goals because you're able to invest identify the right metrics and and eventually you can put less resources there and start focusing on the long term and after years or after quarters it can change back to okay now i'm going back and focusing on more of my short term goals because of where the business is or because of where the consumer problems are and how important it is in the product life cycle for you to address them versus long term goals but it's very important to be able to have this very broad view uh, to always assess how we as product managers are actually putting all of our um, roadmap goals and buckets in in addressing a product roadmap so how do we achieve the balance and and why is it so important um it is not just important to be able to launch a great product experience as most of us think about product life cycles on quarters and multiple years it's very important to be able to build for both the short and long term at the same time and be able to build the the process the people uh, and the predictability around around both of these at the at the right intervals of time so if you really really want to be good at your short term goals and want to spend less time and want to spend more time over the course of over the course of your uh, product journey you have to get very good at ab testing you have to be good at putting your putting the right uh, tests in your product strategy roadmap you should be able to have the right insights you should be able to understand your levers you should be able to repeat and optimize this over years so your product roadmap reflects some of these goals it also should reflect the investment that you spend on tools it should also reflect the investment that you want to use on segmentation cohorting which is one of the best ways to achieve short term goals and show more impact and while you're thinking about long term goals you're really working backwards from your vision you're really working backwards from a business goal and if you have something as strong as say 12 to 18 months we want to create a market differentiator then you have to build backwards from it use the use the roadmap capabilities that you have today to be able to answer the questions one is to be able to answer the space one is to be able to answer the the signals that you get from the space and being able to find if those signals in that space can give you the confidence of building what is the next differentiator in the market or being able to iterate multiple times to build on the next differentiator in the market while doing so it's very important to have the view where you don't overachieve on the short term and underachieve on the long term goals because as product people we want to be very sustainable and efficient in building a roadmap that can do both of them and achieve uh, a very timely growth for our business thank you